Hello gnomes, my name is Chance, welcome to my spellbook and thank you so much for tuning into the first of the gnome sub races. We're going to be talking about the Deep Gnome today, also known as the Snurf Neblin. Hope I'm pronouncing that right, pretty dang sure I am. Uh, that's the way I've most commonly heard it pronounced. Snurf Neblin, Snurf Neblin, Snurf Neblin. Yeah, you guys get it. And this is found in the Sword Coast Adventures Guide. It was initially released in the Elemental Evil Player's Companion, though if memory serves, but was made official in the Sword Coast Adventures Guide. At least I'm pretty sure that's how it worked out. I don't know, my memory's a little bit hazy around these guys. I haven't played Gnome nearly enough to really be an authority on them, to be fair, so there's that. In any case, before we dive into their traits, please check out the full gnome and or race playlist um, just so you know exactly what you get and you can make a well-informed decision. Uh, to do that, all you need to do is click on the little eye icon in the top corner there and then select the playlist from the drop-down menu or alternatively, you can wait until the end of the video and select the relevant end screen. Uh, these guys live like deep underground. Um, so forest gnomes and rock gnomes are the gnomes most commonly encountered in the lands of the surface world. There is another subrace of gnomes rarely seen by any surface dweller, deep gnomes, also known as snurf neblin. Guarded and suspicious of outsiders, snurf neblin are cunning and taciturn, but can be just as kind-hearted, loyal, and compassionate as their surface cousins. Very cool stuff. I kind of like them. They're about as edgy as gnomes get in 5e and they're still pretty nice and kind-hearted and all that good stuff. They're just a lot more withdrawn and crafty, maybe pursuing alternative means of accomplishing relatively sim simple goals. Now let's move on to their traits. Right out of the gate they get a plus one to dexterity as their ability score improvement. Under languages, they also gain the ability to speak, read, and write under common, which based on your campaign may or may not be super useful. They'll gain a stone camouflage, which is similar-ish to Mask of the Wild, um, but a little bit better in some cases. Uh, and it gives you advantage on stealth checks to hide in rocky terrain, which is pretty neat because well, in regardless of what area you are, there's probably going to be rocks kicking around. And they gain a superior dark vision, which extends your dark vision from your aforementioned 60 feet all the way up to 120 feet, which is pretty great. It seems like they're modeled to be more so rogues and uh, more stealthy range-based classes. That would explain the dexterity, the camouflage, and the dark vision. But, I mean, I'm sure they'd make great casters as well, taking advantage of that dark vision once again. Now let's move on to my personal thoughts regarding them. Out of all the gnome subraces, I find them to be the most flavorful and there's the most you could do with them in terms of role playing. However, in terms of raw traits, they leave a little bit to be desired. They are of course heavily geared towards that stealthy rogue-esque playthrough. However, especially with the introduction of a marked gnome, they are they fall relatively short. And even the forest gnome with its natural illusionist might actually make for a better stealth playthrough. However, I mean, who knows? It really does come down to personal preference. If you like the way they look and you can think of some cool ideas for them, I'd love to hear it down beneath. But they certainly stack up fine compared to the vast majority of the other sub races. So pick it if you like. It won't hold you back at all. That being said, if you have any ideas, thoughts, questions, comments, concerns about the Deep Gnome, let me know down beneath in the comment section. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And if you'd like to get a free one-shot, feel free to check out the Guild Hall and use code WELCOME to get yours. And as always, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and of course, happy adventuring.